I am Sandy Almott, Bible journaler here on YouTube, and I have the illustrated words of Jesus for women I wanted to show you. And for a specific reason, a lot of people don't know how to pick images for your Bible journaling. There's a lot of images in this book. And I shared this book with my Bible journaling group, and I think everybody went out and bought it <laughs> after we got back because they were all so excited about having something like this as a seed to start with. And some days when they aren't able to get time to do Bible journaling, they can do this. And so this is one of those ways that you can take some of these images, and I'm gonna show you how you can use that as a, an idea starter to take to your Bible itself. So I opened up to today's, and I've colored yesterday's and today's here in the book. And these each have a little devotional portion. They have some scripture to read. They have some lines so you can write your own journaling thoughts. You can write a prayer, that sort of thing, and then do your coloring portion. And it has one for, of course, every day of the year. And I wanted to transfer this into my Bible in some way. So let me show you what I did. I start off by tracing it because I wanted to have that basic image and I couldn't shove the book underneath of my Bible. So I traced it onto a piece of tracing paper and then I can adapt it from there. So I went to that page in my Bible and I already have it sketched out, but I didn't sketch it out exactly as it was in the Bible because I wanted to fill more of the space. So I've moved the letters and made them a little bit larger than they were here, but it helped me to have that as a guideline to start with spread out some of the words a little bit more. I added more fruit, so I had a whole scene here rather than just those two little pieces of fruit. Used some of the lettering things that they use, like that little from I thought was really beautiful. And I made my grapes bigger. And you can adapt in all different kinds of ways. I added some more branches to the top, and I'm going to leave some room at the bottom for Bible journaling, which is, you know, writing the actual message. What is it that God spoke to me while I was working on this? So that is one way you can adapt the image. I'm gonna watercolor now. I'm using my Gensai Tambi sets to put some base color down. I like having, I've just really decided I like having more color on the page. And this didn't have a whole lot of room for color because it's mostly words and I wanted to have some color on the page in addition to those little fruits. So I'm taking a baby wipe and dipping it into those big paints in order to get some color to spread out here. I'm gonna do a little purple and a little green and go around the focal verse so that that remains highlighted. And with this kind of a thing, you can spritz water over your paints, especially if you have a really big paint well like this. This particular set is good for this technique because you have a large area to to dip in. If you're using another kind of paints, then make a puddle on the surface of something and then dip your baby wipe into that. And the more pigment you use, the stronger the color. And if you use less pigment, you can get a really light color. I just wanted a light color around the whole thing before I started doing the lettering. One of the things I did find is that if I do really heavy color and then do the micron pen over top of it, and then try to do any of the baby wipe work on top of that, the micron pen doesn't really stay. It sometimes bleeds. So that's why I want to make sure I do my color ahead of time. So I'm ironing with a hot iron. Just see you iron real quickly. It doesn't have to be a whole lot for very long. And no steam. Don't ever use steam. And don't use a heat gun. I've had a couple of people ask me about using a heat gun. You'll melt your book and get everything all warped. And so now I'm going to work on adding my lettering. And I'm using two different widths just to see if there's going to be a difference for me and using a heavier width for some of the script and then a lighter width for the printed letters. I am a graphic designer by training. So there's a lot of the typography things I know myself just from studying them my whole life. But if you're new to typography, I would suggest in books like the one that we're using for this devotional inspiration, or if you have one of the Inspire Bibles or one of the others that have the pre-drawn pictures and words in them, analyze those for yourself. Look at what words do they make big? Which ones are the important words they're putting the emphasis on? In this one, the word fruit is really important. So they made it a big, fat, heavy outlined letter, and I'll be able to color those in. 
There's other words that are script. Maybe you want to pick all of your verbs will be scripts and all of the rest of it would be regular words, uh, regular writing, just printed letters. Really depends on what you're trying to communicate in it, but analyze what other people do. When you see Bible journaling on Pinterest or on Instagram or something, look at what it is that people are actually creating and see if you can figure out why they did that and what works about it or what doesn't work. There's a lot of times you'll find things that don't work at all. And that is also something that you can learn from. For the rest of this, I'm just going around and doing my outlines around each one of my little pictures that I've drawn and I have them in pencil. So I'm kind of tracing. But when I've used a very, very light coat of watercolor, I can actually go in and erase some of that pencil with a kneaded eraser. Kneaded eraser is just this big globby eraser thing that you can stretch and knead until it's clean again. It also will re-soften as you knead it. So sometimes if yours gets kind of hard and dry, you can rejuvenate it by just massaging it for a while. Give it to your kids and have them play with it and stretch it and stuff until it gets soft and clean again. So now I can go in and just paint all of these images in here. I had painted around the fruit when I did my baby wipe work so that I could add just yellows and oranges and things for the fruit that I had drawn in there. I'll add a little tiny bit on there for my grapes. And there's really not a whole lot more that I need to do to this. I can add my journaling down below and talk about the things that I learned from God in doing this. But whatever you do, when you transfer images like this, remember that you're not the owner of that concept of that art. So don't purport that you are. If you're using something as an inspiration, tell other people where you got that inspiration from. So if you post it on Facebook and you've used a book like this or any other reference material, it's always good to let them know where you got it. Since I had a little yellow over there on the right hand side, I figured I'd put a little bit yellow on the verse as well. And get that all finished up, then I can iron it and have a finished page in my Bible. So I'm not posting the sketch for this since of course it's not my art. It's just an adaptation from this book, but there is a link to the book in the description down below. And if there's a sale on it, because this is Black Friday, that's why I'm posting this today, then hopefully the sale information will be in the description as well. In the coming four weeks, I'm going to be doing an Advent series, and I hope to do this each year on Hope, Peace, Joy, and Love, the four Sundays of Advent. If you would like to join in, I would ask that you, during that week following, that you would create something based on Hope, Peace, Joy, and Love and share yours on Facebook. I'll have a page or a, a uh, picture on my Facebook page of my piece, and I'd ask that you just add yours to it in the comments so we can all see what each other is thinking about those topics. And if your pastor has given a particular sermon, summarize that for us and share that particular Sunday of Advent with everyone else. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Thanksgiving weekend because this is Black Friday, as I said, and I will see you again next Sunday. God bless you very much. Bye-bye.